Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tom Burns and I'm here basically to do a Wrestlemania review because um, I didn't manage to live stream the whole thing last night so basically um, basically last night I was live streaming it and I managed to get like an hour and a half in and my internet went down. Didn't come back up until about an hour to an hour and a half later. I thought was, I, I'd continue watching him. I'd continued watching WrestleMania. I didn't stop because I wanted to watch it live. And by the time my internet came back up, it was pointless continuing the stream because I'd already watched like quite a few matches by that point. Um, but what I thought is like sometimes I do like. I used to do raw reviews, but um, I don't anymore. So I thought I could, I'd just do this one-off review because I, I was supposed to live stream it and I didn't get the chance to live stream it. So, um, let's start with, I'm going to do it in the order that the matches were. So let's start with the first match. So I'm not going to talk about the boo show because I didn't watch it. Um, so the first match, the first match uh, was Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar. Now, in my opinion, this match was shorter than I expected, but and it was quite boring if I'm being honest. But I was very happy, obviously, with the result. Um, you, I, you actually saw me on the the stream reacting to this anyway, but I'll give you my review anyway. Um. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was just it wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't what I was expecting, but I'm glad that Seth Rollins won. Really happy with the match. I would say. I would give it probably a six out of ten. So that was the first match. The second match was AJ Styles versus John Newton. Now, I thought that this match, before the show, I thought that this could be a match of the night. I honestly did. I thought it could have been the match of the night. Um, you know, two very, very uh, competitive... Sorry, two very... Um, two very um, talented, talented uh, people. Uh, talented superstars in the ring together. I thought this could be match of the night it didn't turn out that way it wasn't the greatest of matches one thing i disagreed with right and, and and there's a couple of these kind of decisions um that kind of annoyed me and it, this was one of them right so aj styles um was you know aj styles got rko'd he managed to kick out of the rko then he manages to hit the phenomenal forearm, which isn't as impactful as the RKO, and manages to pin Randy Orton after one phenomenal forearm. So you're telling me that somebody... You're telling me that AJ Styles can kick out of an RKO, which is more impactful than a phenomenal forearm, yet um, Randy Orton can't kick out of one phenomenal forearm. It was a bit ridiculous, a bit stupid, and it ended anticlimactically for my liking. And just wasn't as great as the match could have been. Um, I felt I, I'll I'll go over it again at the end anyway. So, the next match was the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. It was the Usos versus the Bar versus Ricochet and Lionel Black versus Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura. The winners of this match were the Usos. The winner of the last match, by the way, was AJ Styles. In case you didn't get that, the the winner of that match was the Usos. The Usos retained. And in my opinion, I, you know, it wasn't exactly yes, you know, that much of a special match. It was good, but there was a lot of other matches in the night that kind of overshadowed it. It was kind of like your toilet break match, if, if I'm being honest. But, uh, yeah, the Usos retained, which I kind of predicted they would. Um, so, yeah, not a bad match, in my opinion. 
Sorry, I didn't give you my rating for the for the AJ Styles Randy Orton match. The AJ Styles Randy Orton match, I would give also a six out of ten. The SmackDown Tag Team Champion match, I would give a six out of ten. Shane McMahon versus The Miz. Now, this was the first match of WrestleMania, uh, which was actually pretty decent. It was one of the very few matches at WrestleMania that were actually decent, and it was a great match. Went to lots of different places, and the big spot at the end that finished the match was absolutely amazing. Pretty pissed off that Shane McMahon got the pinfall the way he did. I'm not pissed off the fact that he won. I just wish it had been a different way. But I think it's going to set up a, another match. Maybe a last man standing match. Maybe a steel cage match. Something like that. Uh, it won't just be a normal match. It will be something where they can just beat the living hell out of each other. But it is definitely going to set up another match. Um, great, great match. Great ending. I give it a good 8 out of 10. So the next match was the Women's Tag Team Championship match. The Iconics. Uh, versus Boston Hall Connection, uh, versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia, versus Nia Jax and Tamina. The Iconics ended up winning the match, and you may think that that would have pissed me off, but actually it didn't, and I'll tell you for why it didn't piss me off. The Iconics, as as annoying as they are, they're not that bad in the ring. They're not exactly anything special, but they're not that bad. Uh, I I shouldn't I. I wouldn't put like a singles title on either Billy Kay or Peyton Royce. Uh, I, I I wouldn't, but being tag team champions, you know, they they e- they can easily enough, um, you know, make each other look better. So, um, so I was quite happy for them, you know. Quite happy for them. Um. Not a bad match. I'd give it probably about a 7 out of 10. The next match was the second match. The second of the two matches that were good at WrestleMania. And that was the Kofi Kingston and Daniel Bryan match. Kofi Kingston ended up winning. Which I was absolutely ecstatic about. Finally, after 11 years, it's what he deserves. Uh, It was a great match. I mean, an absolutely fantastic match. These two made each other look amazing. Kofi Kingston had to step the game up completely because, obviously, it was for the WWE Championship. He he had to prove that he wasn't a B-plus player, that he was an A-plus player, and he proved that all right, and he ended up beating Daniel Bryan for the WWE Championship, and it was just a great, great moment. Um, I'd give the match about a 9 out of 10. The next match was the United States Championship match, Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio. Now, this match ended within, I think it might have lasted about a minute, and I think the reason why they ended it so quickly is because Rey Mysterio had uh, an ankle injury. However, it didn't it didn't show really that he had an ankle injury because he was really quick and everything like that. Um, he didn't look like he, you know, he was slow at all, or he didn't look like he was limping or anything like that. So I, I don't know, I don't know what was going on there. I don't know if they were just in a rush to, to get the match over and done with. But yeah, um, Samoa Joe beat Rey Mysterio via submission. The next match was Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Oh, I give the United States Championship match probably about a four out of ten. It, it wasn't anything special. The Roman Reigns Drew McIntyre match now. This match wasn't a bad match. It 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 was quite short, um, but it wasn't a bad match. What annoyed me about it, right? And don't get me wrong, I'm glad Roman Reigns won because I can't stand Drew McIntyre. Never have liked him, um, even before when he was in like the fucking three MB and stuff like that. I've never liked him, um, but what? Um, what I didn't like about the match was the fact that it wasn't as competitive as I thought it was going to be. They've built up over months and months and months now this uh, Drew McIntyre as this monster, as this machine that is pretty much unstoppable. He he rarely loses on Raw, and when he does, it's usually not cleanly. Um, and I thought it's going to be a really competitive match. And I thought Roman Reigns was going to win, but I thought he would have, he would have to fight a lot more to get the win. But it took. Like, two Superman punches, one spear, and Drew McIntyre was down. After being built up as this unstoppable machine, he went down pretty easy. I didn't like that. Glad the Roman Reigns won, just wish it could have been a bit more competitive. Um, 
my opinion, um, I I would give that match probably about a five out of ten. So that's that. So the next part was a segment where Elias was out, um, and we we knew someone was going to interrupt him, but we weren't sure who it was going to be. We, you know, there was rumors that it was going to be Undertaker. There was rumors it was going to be John Cena. I was kind of hoping for the Undertaker so that John Cena was free for later in the night to go against uh, Kurt Angle, but don't even get me started on that part yet. Um, but it didn't happen. Uh, Undertaker didn't come out to interrupt Elias. John Cena did. But he didn't come out to interrupt him in his normal gimmick. He came out in the Dr. Thumb and Thugonomics gimmick. And it was hilarious. And it was it was very, very good. I enjoyed the segment. Um, it, was, it was good. So after that, it was the Triple H versus Batista match. Uh, and it was an no old barred match. And if Triple H lost, he would have to retire. Now, I thought... A lot of people were saying as soon as Triple H put his career on the line that, oh, well, Triple H is going to win, he's not going to retire, blah, 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 blah. But I read somewhere that when Triple H had an interview, this was quite a few years ago, he Triple H had, had been having an interview and they got onto the talk about retirement. And uh, I think that the question was, how would you like to retire um, if you can retire on your own terms? And he said, I'd like... Dave Fatista to be the one to retire me. So I thought when he put his career on the line, I was like, right, this is the moment where he's going to allow Dave Fatista to retire him. Now, whether he, he's obviously changed his... Whether I've got it completely wrong and, and Triple H didn't really say that, or whether or not he changed his mind, you know, down the line. Um, either way, it was a great match. Very brutal. Uh, Definitely not PG, but apparently they're, com- they're trying to get out of the PG era now and go back to TV 14. Um, but yeah, it was a great match. Um, not anything special. Nowhere near as good as the other two matches that I said were great, like the Daniel Bryan Cup against someone and the um, the Shaman Mum Miz match. Um, but nevertheless, pretty decent match. I would give it probably a 7 out of 10. So the next match was Baron Corbin versus Kurt Angle in Kurt Angle's farewell match. This one nearly made me switch uh, WrestleMania off and not even finish watching it. For the simple reason that I just assumed that Kurt Angle was going to win his final match. Not only was I pissed off the fact that Baron Corbin was going to get to face Kurt Angle in his farewell match because Kurt Angle deserved a better send-off. But then to screw Kurt Angle like that by having him lose in such a a convincing fashion on in his farewell match. It's just the shittest way to go out. I mean, don't get me wrong, losing isn't like a shit way to go out because like look at the likes of, of HVK until he came back for one match at Crown Jewel. He uh he um he lost but it was in a career match and it was against one of the greatest of all time, The Undertaker. So at least he had a great send off. Ric Flair, the same. He had a, he lost his final match um, in WWE uh, because it was a career match, and he and that's how he, his career ended. But again, he get, he faced one of the greatest of all times, Ric uh, Shawn Michaels. So at least they had great send offs. Kurt Angle is in the same kind of conversation as Ric Flair and The Undertaker. He's one of the greatest of all time. So to have him be sent off and into the into the sunset with that kind of shit match it was just disgusting the way he was treated and i completely disagree i give the match about two out of ten not because kurt angle not because of kurt angle or not because the match not not because of kurt angle it was just not a great match um he tried his best but because of the way it ended and because of how much they screwed kurt angle i'm just gonna give it a two out of ten the next match was the Intercontinental Championship match. It was Finn Balor, the Demon, versus Bobby Lashley. Um, not the greatest of matches, but it was kind of rushed. Um, Finn Balor defeated Bobby Lashley, having his Demon remaining undefeated. Well, at least in WWE and NXT, he'd been beaten by Drew McIntyre. But that's by the by. I'd probably give it about a 7 out of 10. And then you come to the winner-take-all Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships match. The championship match, Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, 
and Charlotte Flair. So, I was all for the women main event in this match. Now, I'll just prepare you now. I'm going to go on, on a kind of a rant now for a little while about this match. So, I was all about uh, actually this this uh, I'll just read what this article said. It actually agrees with me. Anyway, yeah, this I was all for the women main event in WrestleMania. I've got nothing wrong with that. I love women's wrestling, and I love a lot of the women wrestlers. I think they're very talented. The likes of Sasha Banks, Bailey. Charlotte, some of the best women we've ever seen in a wrestling ring. Um, Becky, I don't rate, but that's just my opinion. Might get a lot of slate for that, but really don't care. So, I didn't want Becky to win the match, but that's not what pissed me off. What pissed me off was the women were given this opportunity. The women were given this opportunity to uh, be part of the main event, um, to be the main event of WrestleMania. And they completely and utterly screwed it up. It didn't feel like a main event. The match itself was just utterly terrible. You've got the likes of fucking Charlotte in that match, who is one of the greatest of all time to ever... She's one of the greatest women of all time. And she performed poorly. You've got Becky, who is just mediocre, in my opinion. And then you've got Ronda Rousey, who is pretty, pretty good, but obviously... You know, wrestling and sports entertainment in isn't her like main thing. So you know, she she's a lot better than she used to be, but she's nothing like amazing. Um, and it was just not as good of a match as I thought it was going to be. Um, there wasn't many big spots. Um, there wasn't many times where the three of them were going at it, or three of them, it was more like two, you know, uh, like Charlotte and Becky ganging up against Ronda Rousey, and if it weren't that, then it was just like one-on-one in the match, whether it be Becky and Charlotte, Charlotte and Ronda, Becky and Ronda, and it was just utterly, utterly terrible, not a great match, didn't feel like a main event, and in my opinion, um, the, I think them three have screwed it up for any women that were hoping to be in WrestleMania in the future because I don't think Vince will trust the women again in the main event after how bad it was. Um, but again, I'm not pissed off the fact that Becky won, even though I didn't want her to win. I expected it, so not really that bothered. What pissed me off was the fact that how it ended. It ended so badly. I know it was botched and everything like that, but it was ju- it just ended so badly, and it just shows how bad Becky is in the ring and how bad Ronda is in the ring. For them to botch the pinfall like that, I mean, I know the ref botched it as well, but if Becky hadn't had the pinfall the way she had and if Ronda, you know, then Ronda would have been able to kick out a lot easier. You know, Becky screwed it up more than anybody and yet people just kind of seem to see past that and just be like, oh, Becky's, you know, they just mark out and, you know, and be like, oh, Becky won the titles, Becky won the titles. It just it, it just infuriated me how bad the match was. And the fact that Becky is now the champion and she's going to be going around, you know, showing off and saying that she's the best and blah, blah, blah. It's just going to make her even more annoying than what she already is. I don't get what there is to love about Becky Lynch so much. So many people seem to love Becky Lynch and I don't get it. I think, I find... Becky is one of the most annoying women to have ever graced a wrestling ring since she turned into this character. All she does is she's arrogant. She thinks she's the best since sliced bread when it comes to wrestling. She doesn't think anybody else can touch her. Yet people seem to fucking love her. That arrogance and that kind of character is a heel character. So why does everybody love her so much? I don't get it. She's not She's not your everyday underdog story because she's already won the women's championship she was the first one drafted to a smackdown so it's not like she had to work to be drafted to a show she was the first woman to be drafted to smackdown she has she's not an underdog she's not had an underdog story yes okay charlotte's had more opportunities than her but that's literally it that's all it is that charlotte's had more opportunities than her it's not that she is an underdog or anything like that it's be- the reason why she's not being given the opportunities that she thinks that she deserves it because she's not that good in the ring. 
I mean, I wish people would see it. I mean, I feel like I'm the only one in the world that sees how mediocre Becky is in the ring. Every single match I see of Becky's is just not that good. She's not fluent. She's robotic. She botches quite a lot. She... Uh, her submission move doesn't even look like it hurts. I mean, I know a lot of submission moves don't look like... I know there's a few submission holds out there that don't look like they hurt. But a lot of them do. I mean, like, Be uh, Charlotte's uh, figure eight lock, right? That looks like it legitimately hurts. Ronda Rousey's armbar looks like it legitimately hurts. Becky's armbar, it doesn't even look like it hurts. It doesn't look like it hurts at all. It's the worst submission finisher I've ever seen. I just don't get it. She annoys me so, so much. I wish she could both go back to the characters that she was before. Because she she was not annoying then. She was just... She was amazing then. But since she's turned... They've, since they've turned her into this character... She, well, she wasn't amazing. Because she, she's never been amazing in the ring. But at least I could... I could... Kind of... Uh, at least I could... Cope with her. You know, I could get past the fact that she wasn't that good in the ring. Because... She, you know, she she was a lovable character, but now she's not a lovable character, and it just shows more how bad, how mediocre she's in the ring, and I just I don't know I don't know what the big fuss is about Becky Lynch. Everybody was like, oh, they did it. They gave the three victories that we all wanted. We didn't. I I certainly didn't want the third victory. I didn't want Becky to win. I'm not the I'm not a massive fan of Charlotte, and don't get me wrong, I do get annoyed that she gets so many opportunities. The disdain that I have for Becky Lynch, it, the disdain I have for Becky Lynch is so bad that I'd rather see Charlotte win. And I don't mind Ronda either. I actually like Ronda since she's turned into this badass character. Like, that's the Ronda Rousey we want. We don't want the smiley Ronda Rousey. No, that isn't the Ronda Rousey we want. But anyway, it pissed me off. I told you I was going to go on to a, a go into a rant there it pissed me off no the match was terrible the ending was terrible it was anticlimactic the ending of wrestlemania it didn't feel like a main event it just felt like your every it, it could have been a match on raw it was that bad it should have it, you know it was it was like a match on raw it weren't like a wrestlemania match uh the rating i'm going to give it is a very generous two um Um, but yeah, I don't know, it just wasn't great, um, and I just think, I don't think Vince is going to trust the women in the main event again at WrestleMania, not at least for quite a long while, so I think that that's it for women main event at WrestleMania, for the time being, if not for good, they've properly screwed it up for everybody else, um, but yeah, overall, the overall show, the rating I give for the overall show would be a 5 out of 10. There was two good matches out of all. It was probably the worst WrestleMania I have watched since starting watching wrestling again. And that was about... I think I started watching wrestling again when WrestleMania 26, when they were building up to WrestleMania 26. So I've been watching it again for quite a long time. I'd watched it before that and then stopped. And then I, I, I started watching it again around about WrestleMania 26. So since I've been watching... So I've seen WrestleMania 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. I've seen nearly 10 years worth of WrestleMania since I started watching WrestleMania again. And that is by far one of the worst WrestleManias I've ever seen. And probably the worst ending I've ever seen to a WrestleMania. Just not good at all. I mean, I don't know. It just really annoyed me. And, and it felt like they were rushing all the time. And the thing was because they put so many matches on the show that they were going to be rushing all the time. It's only natural that they were going to be rushing all the time. I'd rather WrestleMania be three hours long and have decent matches than it be five hours long, have loads of matches, don't give them... Have loads of matches 
and it'd be really bad because they didn't have time to really showcase the matches as much as they should have done. I, I, it was just not that good. Five out of ten for the whole show. The ending was just fucking terrible. The start, it started off so fucking strong as well. And then it ended so poorly. I don't know. But... I don't know. I just hope the Raw tonight uh, is uh, going to be good. It wouldn't take much for it to be better than WrestleMania itself. Uh, oh, and one last thing. The stage was very basic. It was just like a big fucking huge TV thing with WrestleMania on it. And then, obviously, when the superstars came out, their name and stuff appeared on the huge thing. And that was it. Like, it weren't anything special. Um... But yeah, I've got nothing else to say now about WrestleMania. Highly disappointed. Um, it started off so well as well. Uh, you had Hulk Hogan come out, and then you had Seth Rollins beating Brock Lesnar, and it just went all downhill from there. Well, not all downhill. I mean, as I say, there was a couple of ups to Miss and Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan and Kofi, but it just, I don't know, it just wasn't fantastic. I was expecting so much more with it being a WrestleMania, but, nah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that review. I hope I didn't piss off too many people by absolutely slating Becky Lynch. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed my review, and uh, yeah, I shall see you in the next one, in the next video. Bye.